Hey everybody, Milk's here. Monaco too. Way over there. Yeah, I'm gonna get this cursor out the way. All right, unit seven, guys. And this looks like homework number three. On page seven of our pack, we're talking about uh, different combinations of mixtures, homo homogeneous mixtures, and some hetero, I suppose. Mostly homogeneous we're talking about here, but. We basically want to get to what is a solution. True. We're yeah. going to kind of define them all so we can differentiate what is a solution, what makes it so much And better. then we're going to give you a couple of examples of what are not, even though they could easily confuse you if you uh, know your terminology. Right. So what is a solution? First of all, it must be a homogeneous mixture, which means same throughout. Right. Cannot se separate upon standing, meaning if you let it sit on the table for any period of time, it cannot settle out, like separate into different layers or levels. Right, like mud water would look the same throughout at first if you shook it up, but a day later, it would separate. Right. The, all the dirt would fall. Clear down. liquid on top, muddy liquid, and then grit and grime on the bottom. Right. So therefore, it's not homogeneous. And it also needs to be able to pass through a filter unchanged. So all of it. Yeah, like you pass it through the filter paper, and the filter paper doesn't catch anything. Right. It won't. It's all liquid. It goes straight through. Right. So, like, if you make Kool-Aid at home, and you stirred it up real good, and you poured it through the filter, it would still be the same color Kool-Aid after it went through the filter. None of the sugar, the flavor, or anything would get stuck in the filter. Right. That's how you know it's a homogeneous mixture of solution. There you go. There's a relationship every solution has. Solute which is the material being dissolved. The stuff that gets dissolved is smaller in quantity by definition. So a pinch of salt into a pot of boiling water, the salt is the solute because it's just a little bit of it. There you go. And the solvent is the material doing the dissolving. Mm -hmm. So in that same scenario, in larger quantity, the water would be the solvent dissolving the salt. And I gotta be honest, in this chemistry course, we're talking about solutions dealing with water. So we're yeah. pretty much always talking about water is the solvent. Pretty much. The other matter is the solute. There's a couple definitions in here in this video, and maybe the next one, that we'll see a couple of the exceptions where we're not talking about water-based solutions. But generally speaking, aqueous water-based solutions are what we talk about. There you go. And in a solution, of course, the solvent, oh, or the solute, solute, always takes the phase of the solvent. Meaning, I had a solid, I added to a liquid, the solid, quote unquote, disappears into the liquid. You don't see any solid any left. So that's how we say it assumes the phase of the solvent. It's a fancy way of saying it disappears into right. whatever did the dissolving. Right, or dissolves. Dissolves. There, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, there are a few quick examples of some solutions we could make. So solid and solid would be a metal alloy. Most of the metals we come in con contact every day are actually alloys. Right, because we've, we've added another metal in there to make it, you know, to more accentuate a property. Right, make it harder, us, make it right? more heat Stainless resistant. steel is steel that has something other metal added to it so that it doesn't rust. Very useful. Right. Alloy rims on your car, tires. They're light, they're strong. You know, they're expensive. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, put a solid into liquid. Salt mixed into water. Sugar mixed into water. It dissolved. It quote unquote disappeared go. and assumed the phase. There, there it is. There you go. Um, liquid, liquid. You take uh, ethanol and alcohol and put it into water. Most of the alcoholic beverages out there are liquid, liquid solutions. There you go. As well as like rubbing alcohol and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there is some. Products. Yeah, there is. If you get isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol at the store. 70% ISO it's called. There's 30% right. of it is water. Or, uh, another really common one is vinegar. Ooh, 6%, 5% acetic acid. Right. 95% water. Right. And acetic acid is liquid. It's that vinegar smell. And water is the other part. You could not handle straight acetic acid. No. it's Vinegar, by definition, is a diluted version of it. Correct. Because otherwise it would hurt you. you correct. <laughs> correct. Great cleaning product yeah. and tasty as well. Right. Uh, take a gas and put it in the liquid, the carbonated beverage. We, some of us call it a soda, I call it carbonated water, which is the main ingredient in all soda. But yeah, you, bubbles get dissolved in the water. I mean, this happens in your tap water too. Right. Try it. Pour yourself a glass of water, Ooh, drink half of it, Right. let the other half sit on the table for an hour or two. What do you see? 
Uh, I don't know, you tell me. Tiny little baby bubbles showing up on the oh. inside surface of the glass, yeah. showing you that there was some air sure. dissolved in your water. Well, a lot of times, too, when you pour it right out of the tap, it's cloudy. Mm -hmm. And that was, I was always under the impression that that was like a little extra, like, dissolved oxygen and stuff. It and is. You watch it just float right out. You see it just go right away. Air from the pipes and yep. stuff like that. Here, let's see. Gas, gas mixture. Air. Yeah. We got uh, a lot of different gases in the air that we're sure. breathing. There's carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. For sure. All the other smells and odors and things that are volatile that put out molecules into the air that yep. are vapors. Uh, another gas gas mixture would be scuba diver tanks. They're not oh. breathing pure oxygen. No, that's a million problems. For you. Hot. Yeah. Honestly. One, pure oxygen would make you sick. Yeah, it really would. Two, other elements in there would make you almost die, like too much nitrogen to be not. Right, what they would react. Nitrogen's a poison. So yeah, something like problems. something that's inert, helium, right, they can put in there and it's inert. It's really not going to do And then time. other, those of us who are in the trade schools, you know, um, if you've ever done any welding, you got to mix the gases together before you can get them to react and burn and burn in order to melt two pieces sure. of metal together. So that would be a mixture of gases. There you go. You Good. got the different tanks. You set your regulators properly, and yeah, you got to get the oxygen mixed in with that gas. Or it's not going to burn. There we go. Uh, relative concentration, dilute versus concentrated. Dilute would be. A uh, small little baby bit of solute per amount of salt. So like a pinch of salt in a bucket of water, very dilute. Very dilute. And on the opposite end would be concentrated. Take a large amount of that solute in the same amount of solvent. Right. Like a scoop or two of salt. And dilute and concentrated are relative. Correct. Okay? Like you've got to have something to compare it to. Because a dilute solution of like chlorine for you and I putting on our skin keeps us safe in the pool but that same solution you know if it gets in your eyes yeah it's actually really concentrated for what your bot your eyes handle and you get the red eyes you get the irritation and all that stuff so concentrated versus dilute is a really relative thing but in general that's what it is right cool uh, so let's define some quick solutions real quick these are solutions yes. so metal metal mixture of an alloy you take two different metals you mix them together and you get a new alloy Right, and these are tailor-made to what we want that new alloy sure. to be. You want it's like genetic engineering, except for it's with metals. Like you're getting yeah, what you want. Yeah, it's out chemical of it. engineering. I need it to be lighter. I need it to be stronger. I need right. it to be heat resistant. Hey, this titanium is really awesome at making things, except that it's super duper expensive. Is there something I can mix with it so I can cut my costs down a little bit? Sure, titanium. Mix a little magnesium in there. Boom. You know, you got. 95 something five, still light, strong, but strong, and still fulfills the engineering's need. Right. Now this is the big one for us. This is what our unit is based on. Mm -hmm. Aqueous solutions. So something dissolves specifically in water. It results in aqueous solution. You will see in parentheses AQ after compounds written in formulas, implying that they're in dissolved in the water. So the dissolving has occurred. It would look like clear water or colored water, but there's a compound dissolved aqueous in there. There you go. All right, now some not solutions. Right. We're going to talk about these this video. We're going to leave it behind. Right. But we need to be able to have something to compare our solutions because to. Because the, the, the funny thing is that this the, the past for solutions or not solutions is important to know about. But right. the non-solutions, you don't necessarily have to right. know all those yeah. Little details, but they're, well, they're definitely to. not as important. But we, right. you know, it helps to understand what we're talking about. So a colloid is going to be something that looks very much like a solution because it's homogeneous throughout. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it fails the Tyndall test. And the colloids can also be clear, which is confusing. Like I think the best example of a colloid is like Jello cup. Yeah, where you can see through it. You can see through the red Jello cup. Might be a little cloudy, and it looks all the same. Right, top first bite, last bite tastes the same, looks the same. You would think it's a, it's a solution, but it's, it's not. not. Well, because what ends up happening with these colloids is, like we described earlier in the solution, the solute goes down, breaks down, into, or you know, separates into the molecular level. Right. Here, these colloids don't actually separate that much. They get really, really, really ultra tiny particle size. But it's they don't no. separate at the molecular level. Yeah. There's still chunks. There so is speak. chunks, basically. It's, and those sunk, those chunks are evenly spread throughout, so it looks like it's a solution, yeah. but it's not.
Yeah, we're going to get into what that Tyndall test is here in a second, yeah, so then you'll see what that means. So suspensions, this is visibly different things. It will settle out upon sitting. It will easily filter. Think of sand and water or coffee uh, grounds and water. Or the haze and smog in the sky. Like you see the sunlight coming down through the clouds. You see the haze there. Yeah. That's showing you that there's things in the air. Right, dust. And if you were to filter that air, you'd get the filter paper that's got Crud on it, yeah, and then you get the filtered yep. purified air on the one, other yep. side. Yeah. Yep. But you can definitely see this in the suspension. So there's not, unlike a colloid where it looks like a, a you solution, can you can see this one's obviously not. No, emulsions mm. are a fancy colloid. It's a trick. Yeah. Right. I it's, take two two liquids that get don't want to that don't want to mix, and then I get them to mix. But usually you have to use another agent in order to do that, like a soap. Or like eggs or something like that. Yeah. There's certain classes of chemicals that can force these two liquids that don't want to play nice to play nice. Correct. And make it look like a solution. Right. It has to do with polarity, really, because yeah. that emulsifier is going to have a polar end on one side and a non-polar non -polar end on the and other. The molecules got to be kind of big. Right. And that's why, right, to keep the molecules of what I'm getting together apart. Right. And then I can take the nonpolar thing and make it mix with the polar thing, which I don't want to do. Emulsions are super important, and soap is a great emulsifying agent because it gets the grease and oil on our skin to mix with the water from the faucet and gets carried down the drain. Yeah. It's how we get clean. Yeah. If you think about it, the soap can't grab onto that grease until the soap is there. Now the water can grab onto right. it all and it'll take slip it. right off. So you put the soap in, it forces the two to mix. The soap, water, grease mixture is an emulsion and it can wash down the drain. Yep. Mayonnaise is another really common emulsion yeah. that we like to use. We want to go into the emulsions I played with at Kodak. That's oh my god, that's called. what you made millions on. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so let's, let's get into that Tyndall effect real quick. So this is a test that you got to know about. And yeah, we got to up a laser. Our, or we got to up our lasers. My my laser yeah, squeaked. The batteries yeah. kind of shot. We'll get there. We'll call China. A true solution would have solute particles so small the laser would not be disrupted. So if a true if it's a true solution, you shine a laser through the liquid, you can't see the laser beam traveling through the liquid. Yeah, in the liquid itself. In the liquid itself. You'll see the laser hit the wall on the other side because it's going to go through it just fine. Right. But you would not see the beam of light in the liquid. Correct. Basically, you wouldn't see the shaft of light coming down from the sky between the clouds because there's there wasn't nothing for it to bounce off. Right. This picture is showing you a laser light bouncing off the tiny, tiny, minute little particles that are in there. Right. In so, a way that you can see it. Right. So if you look on either sides of that laser, that might look like a solution to you. It's clear. I can see right I through. I don't see it's stuff. Off. Right. And this is the test to prove that this particular colloid is not a solution. It's because, a trick. Because the particles inside are actually too big to be called a true solution. True solution. There you go. So this is the Tyndall effect. Right. Got to know the Tyndall effect. We'll get some lasers at work and actually show you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah it's yeah. fun. As long as you don't goof off and start you know, zapping each other in the eyes. Yeah. So at the end of this video, you got to know the five different variations and how to distinguish between them. Solute, solvent, what a solution is, aqueous. Those are the things you got to know about. Yes. All right. No, some cold. Alloys.